This video is a deep dive into a wiper motor. We're going to take it off the car, test it, discover it doesn't work, open it up, give it a little CPR. We're going to put it back together, keeping it with all its linkage. We're going to cover all the details involved with what it took to get that done. Go brew yourself a cup of joe or pop open a cold one and let's talk shop. on the base go here you may need to put them in from the inside though into the hole got it zoom in on that puppy okay. notice the the spacer metal spacer in the middle of that okay so we need two of those pups two. Yep. so the plug on the wiper motor is pretty much cracked brittle weathered it's got to go so before I pull these connectors out, I just want to note, starting at the top left, we've got blue with a white stripe. To the right of that is blue with a red stripe. Coming around the back, we've got a blue with a black stripe and a solid blue. So the wiper motor bolts go on the side here. These are little six millimeter bolts. They are flange bolts, but they've also got a built-in and really large washer. The flange is not large enough. This is going in a big batch of plating, and that's why I wanted to ID these. I was a little concerned there for a minute. The rivet was just spinning, but... Got it out, we're good. So the wiper motor is covered with a weatherproof bag. Ended up breaking a little bolt here. Tiny little screw. I've got this tiny little quarter inch drive with an eight millimeter head on it. So I was barely turning. It snapped anyway. Gotta get a screw extractor for that. The screw extractor snapped. What now? Rescue bit. Rescue bit comes with a bit on both ends. So even if you've worn one out, you can just switch sides. So with a broken bolt here on the wiper motor, I'm gonna use the rescue bit to try to bail my ass out of this thing. So with the lack of control of a handheld device, I might be better with a drill press, but I don't have one, so. So getting it started was the hard part. It's going well now. I almost need a higher speed at this point. So I'm going to probably move on to my Dremel. Not probably. I am going to move on to my Dremel. Yeah, we're there. So now all i got to do is tap these threads out. So rescue bit worked. And I'm kind of wishing I had this when I had to solve the broken bolt on the firewall for the hood latch. Um, that went well with grinding the nut off the back, but this might have given me another option. There's rescue bit. I'm sold. It's time to tap this out. What I've got here is a 5 millimeter by 0.8. Just making sure I go straight down here. Tapping out threads is like being a politician. It's easy to get crooked. Taking this slow. I don't want to bottom out and then ruin it. 5 millimeter by 0.8 tapping went fine, but the bolt wouldn't tighten, so it just kind of sat there and spun. So, gonna upsize 6 millimeter by 1.0, and again, making sure we go straight down here. This housing is soft metal, it's aluminum, so this is going pretty easy. I just want it to go straight and smooth. One disintegrated plug connector. And I'll get these little terminals cleaned up. 
I removed the plug from my spare wiper motor because it was in fine shape. I need to get the rust off the wiper motor drive arm. I'm gonna dunk it in evapo rust. Not taking the wiper motor apart. Got a little tub. Wiper motor sitting on top. And just that little section that's rusty is sticking into the evapo rust. So the drive arm came out pretty good in the evapo rust. Looking good. All right, we're gonna test the wiper motor here. It should work fine. It did before I took it off the car. Um, what I've got here is the factory manual. Gives a little bit of instructions on how to test the wiper motor, what to connect. If you want, you can test the speed. It's supposed to have like X amount of wipes at the low speed and and what it says is the difference in number of revolutions between low and high should be more than 15 revolutions per minute. Now one thing I want to note is before I even start just the position of this here tang. Position of this tang is like right between these screw holes and so once I connect it to a battery of course it's going to spin and when it's on the car, there's a relay that helps it return to the same spot every time. But we don't have that relay in the picture now. And that would be this item D here. You know, the auto stop D would go to that relay. Don't have it. So making a note of where that is. Power is solid blue. Low is blue with white. Blue with white. And I got nothing. That's the low. Let's try high. That would be blue with red. Cables are warm. It's trying to do something. It wants to. Nothing. Okay, so that proves that this motor is seized. Okay, let's test this one. Nothing. It's locked up, mate. I can feel it. It wants to go. Okay, well, now that I've determined that neither one of these works, I'm going to have to do some... Disassembly. Maybe it just needs brushes or something. Let's get it apart. Let's see what we got. Tiny little Phillips on top. That's the electronics. Definitely want to inspect that and make sure nothing fried. This part looks good. Plenty of lube. Gears not stripped. Alright, I'm going to put one of these back just to hold that in place. And I'll take these off, see how the armature and brushes look. The bearing looks fine. The magnet looks fine. Brushes connected. Still big, long, healthy. If I had new ones, I'd put them in. Look at all the rust on that shaft. So that is why it wouldn't rotate. Now that I've got it apart, I can see <laughs> there is a substantial amount of rust at the top of the shaft here. And that's what was keeping it from spinning inside this bushing here. That looks like it may also have an issue. Going to clean that up. 150 grit. All right, here's some 320. Way better. Way better. All right, let's address the housing. I'm going to use the Dremel 
Got a 120 sandpaper. That's the finest one I have. Try to get the rust out of the bore here on this uh, this housing. Now there's some substantial deposits in there. That's enough. I now want to get any dust and debris out from uh, the barrel there. A little, little PB blaster soak into this here tissue. And then I'm going to pull that through. It's looking a lot better. I think we're good. All right, let's give it a little test fit here into the housing. It does spin freely. Great. Let's put it back together. All right, to reassemble, I'm going to give a little bit of squirt to this here, uh, this little piece that's going to rub on the bushing. Squirt of oil. to disassembly I took a picture and noted that the you know the tang was pointing towards you know the armature portion of the wiper motor and uh, the positioning matters because there's like a self park mechanism so when you turn off the wipers it always returns to the same spot uh, this disc here has a notch and I'm certain that it matters what direction you put that in so I'm making every effort to reassemble in the same orientation that everything came apart. So I know that when this came apart, this little conductive section was pointing, you know, this way. I'm gonna reassemble it that same way. So this disc doesn't lock but you want it to, right? So when it comes to the uh, tightening of this nut here, you want this tang pointing at that tang. So the key is to tighten this down just enough for that to lock, so now the disc won't spin freely, but everything else will, as an assembly. If you crank the nut all the way down, then everything is frozen because now you've bolted the uh, wiper tang to this little housing. So it's a very careful balance. I don't know what the foot-pounds is, but you want everything to spin. You want to make sure that this tang, which is going to hold the wiper arms, and this tang here on the phenolic disc are lined up. I'm going to put a drop of oil on each of these brushes like you would do for the brushes of a starter motor. Like if you're, you know, refurbishing a starter. The oil soaks in to the brush, helps its conductivity, lubrication, whatever it is. For inserting the armature into the brush assembly, I have the luxury of my lovely assistant. She's going to retract two of the brushes while I retract one and insert the armature. Okay. Okay. We're in. Okay. That was Let's easy. Let's test it. And it's moving. Woo! Thanks for your help. Oh, you're welcome. One of the easier things you can do. It's always nice to have Mrs. Let's Talk Shop on the show. <laughs> or at least my fingernails. So I just loaded it up with some grease here. Uh, it just calls for a multi-purpose grease. This one happens to be for, you know, wheel bearings, chassis, suspension, U-joints, doesn't matter. Know that these contacts need to contact this disc. So I'm going to give this a little bit of a wipe with one of my debris-free 4x4s just right there. So when these contacts touch that disc, it'll operate correctly. So the, yeah, for, don't forget there's a big magnet in there. So it just sucked it right on in. So I'm gonna tuck that little wire 
in there like that. These are little tangs with threaded sections that go here. test it. Okay, back to testing. We're going to put the blue and white on the black and we're going to put the solid blue on the red. So I've got that set up here. Solid blue on the red and we're going to retest this now that we've fiddled with it and done a little bit of a refurb. Let's see if we got a, a working motor now. And there we go. Fantastic. Tried to stop her right at seven o'clock when, uh, yeah, that should be the auto stop here. Let's do a better job on that. Maybe, yeah, right about there. Close enough. Uh, once it's put in the car, it'll, you know, reset itself. All right, there's a few fine details we need to talk about before we put this on the car. Another thing we're going to do is underneath these little swivel points, lives a piece of felt. So I've got some felt here. Need to make like a felt o-ring, I guess, kinda. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. You see that little piece of felt right there? I'm just gonna kinda make some of those. these up too by the way. Be sure the felt acts as like a reservoir of oil. For the hardware, um, the bracket here has one, two, three threaded nuts there. Um, the bolts are six millimeter. Not sure what the thread is, probably like 1.25 or something. Uh, the standard bolts came off the car, have a built-in, you know, it's a flange bolt plus a built-in large flat washer. All right, let's just check these threads. So when you powder coat, powder does get into the threads. I'm reminding these threads what their favorite pitch is. You don't have to tap it, just get one of your original bolts. Original washers uh, that mount this bad boy to the firewall. So it's two layers of washer, two layers of rubber. There's a metal insert where your bolt goes through. Now one thing I set out to do was to have these made. There was a rubber factory not too far from where I was living there in the Bay Area. But I was going to make a shitload of these and sell them because at the time Phil's Rotary had nothing. Those are going to help mount it to the firewall. So let's get the plug put back on. So what goes on the top is uh, blue-red on the top left and blue-white on the top right. Well, let's talk about the bracket now. I want to point a couple things out. It's not straight. There's a bend here and a bend here. And that is from the factory and on purpose. Let me show with the other camera. Yeah, so there's a bend right there and another bend right there. Let's talk about the cover. So the cover is deteriorated. It lasted a good long time, 45 years. To get a new one, what I did was, I got a cover for side mirrors. It's a little big. It's like twice as big. It's waterproof and it'll keep it dry and that sort of thing. So between the cover and getting the bracket put in place, that's kind of next. 
I want to put the cover on first because it has holes that go through to the bracket. So what I'm going to do first is create the primary hole here and then the bolt holes. Preliminary thoughts on what to cover this with. I was just going to get some, you know, plastic bag, but <laughs> yeah, this thing's got to be in the sun. It needs something UV protected. So then I was thinking, what about a winch cover? Winch cover is UV protected and waterproof. Winch cover is really big though. Even the smallest winch cover was too big. So then it's like, okay, well, what about mirror covers? And a mirror cover seems to be pretty reasonable here. So this one screw that was tapped out and made bigger. So I've got a bigger screw for that. Bigger bolt. We got to make the hole bigger on the bracket. So that's what we're going to do now. Drill that out. So let's zip this bag up. I guess I can just like cinch it down, yeah. You know, and then tuck it. You know, the original one had a big old rubber band. We can use that again. And I'm impressed that the rubber band held up under the sun. Well, it's under the cowl, but still. Okay, what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm gonna kind of loosely reassemble this here. Then I can better do the riveting of this, uh, this component onto the wiper motor. I'll just put these on, their little nuts on. I'm gonna keep it loose for now. We'll deal with tightening things up later. All that jackhammer noise is, uh, we're having some work done. We're getting pergolas put on our front and back patio. So that's what all that racket is. All right, let's do the old uh, rivet thing here. Okay, there's one. Nice. Riveting done. Okay, so with that done, um, now if you'll recall, I had a brand new felt that went here. There's an original felt there that I've lubricated. I oiled it. And now I've got these other two felts here. And they go here and here. So on those two levels there. Okay, let's get those put on. These felts will just, sure they'll help lubricate. They'll also help keep moisture out of these little joints where there's metal to metal in there. So the Haynes manual recommends uh, molly grease on all these little uh, pivot points. Now I do have the felts in place with the oil that I used, regular oil. And um, I believe that is prudent to put grease on those, like the Haynes manual says, so I'm going to do that now. Put up a shorts reel on the Twitter feed, the Instagram page, the Facebook page. Looking for this plastic plug here. This one's all disintegrated. Data Potato on Twitter said, hey, get them from JCAR in Australia. Oscar Montemayor says, yeah, just get them off eBay, man. And then uh, Rafael Rivera, he puts uh, a link up for me to get them from Amazon. Nice little kit, contains a whole bunch of them. It's only a few bucks. So yeah, that's what I ended up getting.
then we'll get it put back on the car. Go brew yourself a cup of joe, or how about the neighbor driving by? And yeah, that's a dickhead. Decade.